As you find your seats um, and coming in, I want to just say welcome to you and super excited to be able to spend the morning with you and looking forward to what the Lord will say to us and show us. So what I want to do is just invite each and every one of us. It's a standard procedure for us now. You know what I'm going to say next. We are going to just pause for a moment and bow our heads right where we're at. Individually, we're going to just go before the Lord and ask him to do his work in our hearts. Amen. This is the third Sunday of Advent. Uh, if you're following Advent along in like the world, not in a bad way, but you'll, they say it's only the second week. And that's because some people celebrate Advent four weeks and some celebrate it five. We choose to do it the five weeks. Um, just so you know, that's why we're on week three. Everybody else is just slow to the party. Um, so we've also been doing something pretty neat. We've been inviting people who have who either are from or have direct ancestry in another country because we want to know that, you know, Christmas and, and the celebration of Jesus' birth isn't just for us Americans. It's a global thing. And so we imported somebody from South Africa, uh, and they, we actually have a couple of imports from South Africa. But this morning, uh, Tim is going to come and read from... It's, I think it's pronounced Afrikaans. Yes, and then in English. Yay! I'm with you. Thanks, man. Right, I'll be speaking in Afrikaans. It's one of the 11 official languages spoken in, in South Africa. And I'll be uh, from Luke 8 through 14. So it's Lucas 8, dear 14. En daar het hy die herders in die selde wedstrijd op die oopveld geblei en in die nacht oor hulle skape wacht gehou. En meertens staan daar een engel van die Heere by hulle. En die heerlijkheid van die Heere het rondom hulle geskyn en groot vrees het hulle oorweldig. En die engel sê vir hulle, moe nie vrees nie, want Want kijk, ik breng jullie groot tijdings voor een groot blijdschap en voor die hele volk zal wees. Daar is voor jullie vandaag in die stad van David geboren, een zaligmaker van Christus, die hier is. En dit is voor jullie die teken. Jullie zal een kleinkie vind wat in doeken toegedraaid is en in die krip le. En skielik was daar saam met die Engels een menige van die Heermelijk leerskap wat God uh, prijs en sê. Eer aan God en die hoogste hemel en vrede van aarde. En die mense is wel behou. And there were shepherds living out in the fields by, uh, nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring good, you good news, and you will cause joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in the clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angels, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest of heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Thank you, Tim. What's neat, uh, is I have this 
every week when we've done that, we had Swedish, then we had Spanish, and then this week Afrikaans. And it reminds me in that vision in Revelation, where in that final picture, there are people from every tribe, tongue, and language shouting out praise to God. And I it always in my mind just assume everybody's speaking the same language I am. But in that scene, it's every tongue, tribe, and nation crying out praise to God. Amen. Uh, let's stand and sing as we celebrate the risen King Jesus.
Thank you. Please be seated. Well, good morning again. I'm Mike, I'm the pastor here, and super excited, like I said, to be able to gather with you in worship this morning. Uh, it's sometimes people give fun facts about themselves as they do the announcements, and just when you think you know everything about somebody, here's a new thing. I believe that anchovies, artichokes, and Brussels sprouts are a result of the fall of man. <laughs> they should not be consumed. That's just an interesting fun fact. Ser very seriously. Uh, there's no time for comments now. You can see me later. <laughs> well, I want to welcome you here to Christ Community Church, where we don't eat artichokes, anchovies, and brothels. No, just kidding. Um, so yeah, there is a, a section in the bulletin which you can fill out if you're visiting with us. And they, these bulletins are in the back where that door is and just outside that door over there. You came in one of those two doors and we'd love it if you grabbed one of those and just took the opportunity to fill it out and you could put it in the offering plate which is beside the, the bulletins. Also on there, there is a prayer request section and that's for anybody, that's an all play. Anybody who wants us to be praying for them, put that on there and we will be sure to be praying for you uh, and then if you were interested in having us actually come to you to pray, I would love to have that opportunity as well. That would be a, a privilege that we could enjoy together, I hope. Um, but there's a couple of announcements that I want to, again, draw your attention to that are in the announcements. Uh, most of them are just informative of times and dates for things. But at the door, you might have seen this beautifully done piece of paper and you probably received it in an email as well and that's informing us of all of the different opportunities that we're going to have on Christmas Eve and I'm glad that I'm the one doing announcements this morning so that I can bring your attention to it. First of all, everybody with me? Eyes up here, right? Yeah, because Sunday morning Christmas Eve we will not be here. We won't be here Enjoy your time together as a family that morning or whatever it is that you will do. Um, but in the afternoon, beginning at 3.30, will be our first opportunity. And that's when we are going to be going to the Mount Morris Skilled Nursing Facility, the Livingston County Skilled Nursing Facility, to put on uh, a Christmas Eve road trip, we call it. And the way we do this is a few years ago, we, we, we felt called of God, honestly, to go to people who could not go to, come to us. And we felt like God would have us take a Christmas Eve service to them. And so one of the places that we're going this year is that skilled nursing facility. And we're going to put on what we would put on here for ourselves, a traditional Christmas Eve service, candlelight service. We'll sing some songs. There's going to be someone who shares from the Word of God. We're going to have candles and, and enjoy that time. So that's at 3.30. But we need you to sign up because we want uh, to take a part of us there and go and enjoy that with them and celebrate with them. Then at 4.30 and at 5.45, we in, go into the Livingston County Jail, which is just down the street, and we'll put on two different services there. That The people that can go into that have to have been cleared. And if you don't know what I mean when I say that, then don't sign up. You can't go in. Um, I'm thankful that I can, and I'm also doubly thankful that they let me out every year. That's really good. Um, so, yeah. But then the last one on their, well, not the last, but the last opportunity road trip is the uh, Morgan Estates, which is the assisted living up behind Aldi's. And that one starts at 545 as well. And so we need you to sign up for these. Don't look at it as an opportunity. Ah, I don't have to do anything. No, we get to do this. We get to take these beautiful people, this opportunity, and enjoy it with them. So please, starting today, we need you to sign up so that we have an idea of who's going where and see if there's any need to rearrange anything. But that's our hope and goal. And then, after all of that, we all come back together here and there will be uh, treats and cookies and goodies in the sessions room over there before, but then we'll begin our own service here. And if you've, anybody been here before for the Christmas Eve service here? These are, yeah. So looks like about 30 to 40% of you is all. That means the other 50, 60% of you have no idea how beautiful it really is and how excellent and, and 
touching that service is. It is incredible. And we want to invite you to that. It's at 7 o'clock, 7.30. It officially starts. Please come to these. And then one, if you get this, just notice two other things on the bottom of it. One of them is a Christmas morning opportunity. <coughs> Excuse me. Christmas morning, uh, we started this just a few years back. For those of you who are interested, this is usually a smaller, intimate group. Uh, we usually join over there in the sessions room again and just enjoy some singing and uh, some scripture time together. It's usually thematic, and this year's theme is Jesus, hope for the world. And those are the scriptures that we'll be looking at. It's usually 45-ish minutes. We enjoy some incredibly good, not good for you food and enjoy that time together. So that's at 9 o'clock. That's on there. And then the very last thing on there, Tim and Linda Letson have been doing some great things by renting out the movie theater down in Dansville so that they can provide a movie for the uh, community for free. And there is a movie going to be December... 28th at 3 p.m. and it's called Christmas Angel. It's a great opportunity to invite somebody and it's a conversation starter. It might be something you'd want to do as your family or a couple or however you want to do that but you got this in the email. If you didn't get it in an email that's because you're not on our email list. If you'd like to be that's another thing you can fill out on that bulletin. Otherwise they're at these doors. Would you please bow with me as we go before our Lord Jesus Christ King of Heaven. We bow before you because you are both Lord and King and those titles could be very fearful titles if we didn't understand that you expended your great energy towards grace and love that you we and we're just reminded of that so beautifully this time of year that you sent your son into the world at just the right time while we were yet sinners Christ came for God you so loved us that you sent Jesus that whoever would believe upon him would have eternal life rich full everlasting life we praise you for that God and this morning we know that there are a lot of needs and how awesome it is, God, that you invite us to bring everything before your throne and lay it at your feet. Those joys that we have and praises for your work in our lives, but also those hurts, heartaches, pains. You say, ask, and it'll be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened. And, and that's just imperative that we keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. And so, Lord, we bring before you uh, Becky, who's not feeling well at all for the last month or so, and we ask, God, that you would bring full and complete healing to her body. And Sherry, who's just this week come down with shingles and ask God for a quick and speedy recovery. That's an exhausting and painful thing. And for Kim, God, She's going to have an appointment this week with a neurologist. Would you give him wisdom to help him understand what it is exactly is going on so that they can treat her and that she will have relief from this constant pain that she's been experiencing. And Lord, it is her heart's desire to be able to be home. And if that would be your will, that she'd be able to get the surgeries or treatments that she needs so that she could be returned home, we would praise you for that as well, God. And for Joe, God, for the radiation that begins on Monday, you strengthen his body. Um, fill him with a peace that comes from your Holy Spirit. And Terry and, and Joey and Haley is all, God, fill them with your, your power and your peace. Um, may these radiations do exactly what they're designed to do and shrink that tumor down. And also, God, we want to pray for the other doctors that are going to be involved as they engage and interact with doctors that are outside of his normal treatment plan, that are looking for another way that they can arrest this growth of this tumor in his brain. God, would you give them a collective wisdom that isn't just built on books, not even built on past experience, but holy insight from you, God. 
we pray also for Linda and for Faith and for others that we know personally and love deeply that are struggling with either cancer or other pains. And for those in our midst, God, who are also struggling with the, the difficulty of broken relationships, uh, that separation that just causes our hearts to grieve. Uh, we pray, God, for res restored relationships. And if, if the relationships are broken because there's a brokenness between them and you, God, would you bring that restoration? Would you restore their souls to you, God Almighty? Love them deeply and draw them by your Holy Spirit so that they are restored to you. And then what a day of rejoicing it will be. God, thank you that you are the one who goes after the, the one. That you are the one who said, I will leave the 99 and go after the one. That you, God, according to your own lips said, I have come to seek and to save the lost. And we celebrate Christmas and, and that's exactly what Christmas is. It's a search and rescue mission. You came to earth to seek and to save the lost. How we praise you. That's why we sing. That's why we gather together this morning and sing and lift our voices so that we could celebrate and rejoice over our Redeemer, Jesus Christ, who has come. In all of these things, we give you praise and thanks. In the name of Jesus, amen. Would you please stand as we sing our next two songs?
Amen. Please be seated. What did I do? I didn't even get started yet. Can you take the chair and move it on the stage? Okay. Okay. The children can leave. You can go to McDonald's and buy anything you want. It's on Pastor Mike. Well, look at him. Good morning, church. Whoa. Where's the snow? Rain in December. My goodness gracious. For those of you who don't like rain or snow, or the dark of night, (laughs) I'm just practicing. Anybody feel like practicing leaping with me? Charlie, do you want to try leaping? Come on, I'm older than you are. Oh. I don't know. I can leap better with sneakers on. I can leap even better with bare feet on. And I washed my feet this morning. So, wow. Yup, it's a joyous time of year in our passage this morning in Luke chapter 2. <clears throat> is such a familiar passage to us that sometimes you think, oh yeah, I've, I'm... I'm 52 years old, and I've read it 52 times every Christmas. I think I know it pretty well by now. (laughs) But the richness of that passage is astonishing. And it is really a pivotal place in all of Scripture. Our topic is joy. So that's what I was practicing, leaping for joy. Well, don't, it's not funny. When we get to heaven, we'll all be leaping for joy, won't we? To enter the throne of God in heaven, and he says, Welcome, thou good and faithful servant. You better believe after I get done bowing in front of him for 10,000 years, I'm going to be leaping up and down for 10,000 years just to be in his presence, which is where we're going all together in this today. There is a story about a young man, uh, his name is Mark, and uh, he, he pursued everything in life there was to pursue, money, homes, relationships, business, drugs, alcohol, he's all failed him in his pursuit of happiness. And so he finally went to a pastor, and the pastor said, what's your story? And the guy told him, all I want to be is happy. I can't achieve happiness. I've done all these things, and I can't get happiness to endure. I mean, it's fleeting. I feel good for a little bit, and then it falls apart. And I feel terrible. All I want to do is be happy. Is that too much to ask? I don't know if you've heard that story wandering around among people. It's a pretty typical story. All I want to be is happy. The problem with that statement, that desire, is that the people who say that ask for too little. What they really want that eludes them is joy. And joy is a much deeper, profound, internal, divine quality than happiness. The root word of happiness is happen. And so it's easy to make the connection. Happiness depends on what happens to you. So if 
the wheel flies off the back of my truck, which it did this summer, um, going down the road. Ooh, that's a wheel going by. <laughs> yeah, that's, that looks like my size. Maybe I better pull over. I could have been pretty unhappy because the circumstance was not very positive. Fortunately, all's well that ends well in that case, but that doesn't always happen that way. Circumstances sometimes dictate how we feel, and happiness is more of a feeling than anything else. It's emotion. It's in a response to some circumstance. At Christmas time, we all want to be happy, but some of us are carrying burdens, and in this world, you look at the evening news or the morning news, and it's not a very happy place. Not at all. We could be living in Israel, in Palestine, in Gaza, or the Ukraine, or in a half a dozen countries in Africa, or South America. And our happiness would be tainted by those circumstances that we'd encounter. The news at night is filled with catastrophes in life. Joy is not dependent on our circumstances. It's important to know that. This is, this is basic stuff that I'm sure you all know. But joy and happiness are not the same thing. Joy is from the divine. It is a gift from God. We'll fill that out as we go along. It's, it's deeply rooted. It's akin to peace. It's like the peace you have as you go to bed at night, hopefully, and you empty your mind of the day's burdens and you say your prayers. And if you're married, you put your arm around your wife and you kind of coast off to sleep, your eyeballs kind of relax, and everything seems to... I hope people go to sleep that way. That God has blessed us during the day, regardless of the circumstances that we might deem that make us happy. But that kind of peace, where all is quiet, all is under control, all is relaxed. All is at peace. Sometimes you have to practice at that. When I worked in the factory when I was in college, my father got me a job in the factory he worked in, in the summertime. <coughs> and at that time, I kind of burned the candle late at night, even in the summertime. And so at lunchtime, I would have a quick sandwich. We got 25 minutes for lunch, and I'd eat my sandwich in five minutes, and then I would lay down on a, bo a pile of cardboard boxes stacked on a pallet and fall asleep. I trained myself to fall asleep instantly by relaxing. That's what joy is, akin to that kind of peace where it's quiet. The third candle that we're looking at this week is called the shepherd's candle, generally speaking, and that's what has to do with our passage in Luke. It's a joy candle because it is the annunciation of divine joy come to earth. And as we go on, hopefully we can fill that out. Let's read this passage one more time because it is so common we think we know it pretty well. And we sometimes don't pause for the individual words and the weight they have. Verse 8 of chapter 2 of Luke, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, 
Don't worry, be happy. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy. Oh, I got to practice that again. That will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. If there was ever a more important passage in Scripture, it would be hard to rank it against this. Simply because the promise of centuries, of eons, has come to be fulfilled right then and there. So who were these shepherds living out there in the fields? Who, well, we all know what a shepherd is, although there aren't many of them left anymore. I think um, Carol's brother had the last flock of sheep in Groveland, and that was a long time ago. Mostly the dogs, the neighbor dogs and the coyotes ate most of them, I think. That's what the danger ha having sheep is. Amish people have them over towards Sparta and Tuscarora. But we don't really know much about being a shepherd, all of what it's involved in. But these guys were not ordinary, I don't believe, ordinary shepherds. They weren't just watching their sheep. I believe because of its proximity to Bethlehem. Said they watched their flocks Nearby. Nearby what? Nearby Bethlehem. That they were very possibly specially chosen, highly trained, wonderfully equipped to watch these special sheep near Bethlehem. I believe these sheep that they were watching over were marked for sacrificial lambs. And that these shepherds might actually have had some direct association with the temple priests. And their responsibility was to keep those special sheep without blemish or spot close by the temple and ready for sacrifice. That's what they were doing there. So it was cl very close to the temple, very close to Bethlehem. And they could very well have known from Jewish tradition called the Mishnah that the Messiah would be revealed from the, get this now, this is a, a, something you don't hear every day, the Migdal Eder. Jim, you know what that means? I don't either. <laughs> the Migdal Elder, Eder, is the tower of the flock. And that the Messiah will appear in that vicinity. The Migdal Elder is the tower of the flock. So, in other words, there was a watchtower built, erected. Someone ascended and watched over broadly. Shepherds were tending. So they may have anticipated, if they knew that the Messiah was going to come from the Migdal Eder, flocks dis destined. These guys, sheep pushers. These guys must have been the temple. They probably knew, acknowledged traditional story about the appearance of. And so when. And imagine sitting out, no lights from Walmart or sky, 
and Sarabas of but just dark. Nothing out except twinkling stars and quiet munching of sheep. It, it, it's a pack awaiting some anticipation. Scripture says, and he shall stand and shepherd his Lord in the majesty of the notion of the Messiah. In addition to the sacrificial lamb, in all areas of the Old Testament, they knew he was coming, that the Messiah was coming. When will Jesus come again? Signs of the times have any suggestion that he may be even so come soon, Lord In 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 2, the tribes come to David, his leadership, and this is what's, you shall be the shepherd of my people, beginning even before David. The whole notion of a shepherd, God's people, this is a double we find that not only will the great shepherd come him, but also the will come from Bethlehem. All. All for and in fact when he says do not be afraid for goodness sake. Fearful once this angel guy and starts talking to you. You can't catch your breath. You're weak in the knees. Who knows? They're probably scared out a minute. Don't be afraid. Not. Savior has been born to you. Two things happening here again. I bring will be for all the people. I, uh, and then later on in verse 11, the Savior, you, you, sitting out in the fields, it's your Messiah, time to leap. Don't sit in your pews, past he came for you and me, Eve. That's from the joy, <coughs> excuse me, of the promise by the Messiah. Description in verse 11. Savior in the town of the a Savior is born. Or, yes, the Messiah. He's the one you've been weep for joy. He's final. How can you process this? That God incarnate to be the anointed one, to be the. It's my. Great joy. What do we have to be so joyous over? So there's a little babies born in danger. And we doesn't sing prospects. He says, great joy, great joy. Hey. Basically, middle classers. And we don't um, a little crazy. This is, and if you're too infirm to leap, you can you can do this. <laughs> An instructional for Matt. You can do, and I think he does. Is a certain physical 
the having and knowing the great joy, penetrating peace in the knowledge that secure in our works, not in what we've done, Our joy is not dependent on is dependent on finished work on the cross. That's powerful, brilliant God. That's not by works left, but by grace alone. Alone. Chapter ten, Jesus a gag cast out evil spirits and demons and they give him a report. They're excited now. They're like, wow! You can't, we just dispersed it and we rear ends. We we, we cast out people. We did all this stuff in your name and then we're so excited. Well, you should be excited. Earth. In Luke chapter 10, verse 20, he said, Don't rejoice. Spirits submit to you. I get this. This is what names are written in heaven. Is your name written in heaven? Do you know? It is written in the Lamb's book of life. You should be jumping up and down for joy. Were there. Sometimes I think finished by our small grasp of the alternative. Alternative to hell. Hell. We don't talk much about that at Christmas. I needed a savior, something that some destiny in hell, God separated from God. To contemplate that that fate, the Savior, fathom, and it of God of being conscious of His light and His love from that judgment and His sacrifice, even in. Deliverance that the Savior brings to us. It should be overwhelmed. See, I take it so often how commonplace it is. I listen to my dear and pray for hours every night for every need under many of you. I wish I were more. But in John chapter joy, verse 6 of the world, only son, I couldn't do that. One daughter, I have not given one of them up either. And it's Sent the Messiah to come in a manger so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting. For the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him, one is not condemned. That's peace. Feel the weight go off your shoulders. Mint will never rest upon you. Only see the blood of the Lamb. Throne room of the King. That stands in stark contrast. Eve. And 
already. Because he has his one and only son. We gather here on Sunday morning. Being back, by the way. Been a long sojourn away from home. But saints to worship only son to die for each. And if we believe we have each, that's joy. Joy is the peace in ourselves and God. Joy is that peace we experience by God and dwells in us that cannot be circumstanced, rock solid by God. In first, which is the classic passage, joy. Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Peter is, Peter is fit, he's fit to burst. He's so filled with confidence. You see, once we know and our love for him, we need that assurance. And that assurance leads us to even deeper. So we are no longer at odds with God. Penalty that by the blood of the sacrificial lamb so long ago. Quickly, praise be, this is 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, to God and Father in his great, I want to fall down on your knees weeping, it's so sweet. He has given us new birth into a, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And in never perish, spoil, kept in heaven for you. No matter your life circumstances, carry deep grief and awesome burdens, multitude of things can't change is the peace never ever leaves you and that promotes joy that's beyond it doesn't mean oh we're not burdened or we don't hurt because God never promised us. he only promised to redeem us joy It's kept through faith, are shielded by God's power. salvation that is ready to re time. In this, you greatly rejoice. Gospel, calm. There's a, there's a point in lives. For me, it's worship on YouTube of all places. But help. So many songs, sing Sila, sing their songs, or whoever. Being stirred deeply, and it's because I'm closer to heaven than. But stirring because I am reminded that Jesus Christ saved me. As he continues, and we'll wrap this up. In Though now for a little deep of all kinds of trials, so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes, be proved genuine, and may be honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Take that day the way maybe starting their flocks at night, anticipated, looked forward, the Messiah. Return of Christ, or are we going to wait until after Christmas? After we make our new year serious about doing the right thing. Return of Christ, if we walk out of this and all of a sudden, 
Uh, I one more deer seat until I shoot. It has come to me in the ever will. Keep holding on to that as a as though my condition for his return. Just just one dear on just one record book, Bob. My reward, however, is to be welcomed into heaven. That's where. Though you have not seen him, you love him. You did not see him now, you believe in him. Line. Encourage us to seek inexpressible joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the self. Oh, just dwell, think about it. Meditate. Expressible, beyond words. And left out. But one thing, Isaiah chapter 49 is instructing Isaiah. And he says, See, I envision him. Uh, how we come, but I envision him is my name on the pot. and he's up. Rejoice. In Psalm sixteen, Thomas says, You will show me the way of me the joy of your presence, living with you. Forever. We have to look forward to. But thank you that we can be so filled that we can't pin it down. It's more like deeply rooted or have known or will know. Sins. The of those sins and believe Savior, who he says he is have with God to know the knowledge because that is what gives us assurance salvation reason that we all might do a little and um, even when we have to go to Walmart help us to be thank you Jesus in your name
Now unto him who is able to keep praise without fault and with to the only God power and Jesus Christ our Lord ages now and